What's up, bro? So for the past one month or so, I only made about $12,400. And the reason why it's so less is because I've been losing lately. And I'm going to talk more about that later, right? I've had a bad month. I've only made 12.4k. All right, it is what it is. I'm just going to suck it out and move on. I shared my losses the last uncut episode and nobody gave a shit. So in this episode, I'm just going to share with you guys the wins and how you guys can actually replicate my wins and learn from it and actually learn how to implement this new market mechanics trading strategy that I've been using since the start of 2024. So this was an insane entry that I actually caught on EURUSD and I made about... 5.1k based on that one trade alone so let me show you how i caught this beautiful move right here let's start from the beginning so that you guys can understand my thought process from the top to the bottom so first things first we always want to make sure that we actually analyze the market structure to see what price is doing and you can see price is in this very bullish uptrend price is going up and you know just good days right happy days and this is where price goes up and it starts pulling back. Now, the moment it starts pulling back, you know for a fact that price is going to create a higher low and higher high dynamic. And right now, next thing you know, price pushes up again. Once again, break through the last high. When you break through the last high, what you can do is that you can draw your break of structure right there. So the moment price break through the, the last high, right? You want to anticipate that pullback, right? You want to wait for price to actually, you know, pull back, create the higher low. And that is when you can potentially enter for your trade setup, right? Another scenario is that price could, you know, actually reverse and head back down, right? That is the two scenarios. That's the only two scenarios. Price can either go up or go down, right? Don't complicate things. So next thing is that we just want to be very patient to wait for the pullback to happen. So price comes back down, right? Comes back down. And you can see if you go down to like the one hour time frame, you can see price has managed to come down to this demand zone that we have right here right so at this area right here this is when price actually you know got pushed up and then come back down retrace to this demand zone before pushing up even further so this is the very demand zone where we are pretty much anticipating buyers to actually enter into the market and actually push push price up now this is also somewhat like an inducement now for those people who are not familiar with inducement inducement are basically traps set by smart money to bait and entice retail traders to actually enter for the position right so right now price could potentially be you know creating that down bottom and that is when retail traders are going to be entering for their buy position right here and they're going to be placing their stop loss below these lows right here right or there is also going to be you know your breakout traders where they want to enter for a sell when price break out here and then they can be placing their stop loss right here so there is pretty much liquidity around this area here and that is when we want to be very patient to wait for that liquidity sweep i want to wait for that you know smart money liquidity sweep before i actually enter for the trade so right here what i could was doing was that i spotted this demand zone and i can start saying you know the buyers are like kind of going away right like there's very less demand at this area here Right, it's just all small candlesticks, you know, lots of exhaustion right here. Not much movement in terms of price. So I was waiting, right? I was waiting to see what price does. And you can see price comes down here. And once again, it comes down here. This demand zone seems to be holding, right? So right now, price seems to be going to go up right now, right? So like I said, this is when all the goddamn retail traders, all the noobs, all the slaves, they're going to be entering for their buy right here. Place their stop loss below this demand zone and take profit at like the next key swing high or whatnot, right? And... Like I said, I'm just going to share with you guys how this will not work out. But let me just get rid of that first. And let me just show you how professionals do, do it, right? So professionals, what we are doing is that we are eventually just waiting for liquidity. Because you must understand, the market needs liquidity to move. That's the fundamental fact that will not change. The market requires liquidity to move. It doesn't just anyhow move anywhere. At this point, I'm asking myself, where is the available liquidity, right? So I know for a fact that when price actually goes down and actually come back up and actually goes back down, right? There is liquidity above this swing high right here, right? So there is liquidity above this swing high because like I said, some retail traders, they might want to enter for a sell here, place their stop loss above these highs right there. Or the retail traders who are bullish and they want to enter when price break above this high, you know, to continue their uptrend and that is when they're going to place their buy stop orders right here. So there is going to be a lot of, you know, liquidity building up at this area right here. So I saw that, right? So what I did was that I was very patient, right? I want to wait. I still want to wait. I want to wait for price to actually sweep the liquidity above these highs and then potentially make this huge down move. So that was what I was anticipating. So, 
I was just waiting and waiting and you can see price goes up, right? Lots of bullish momentum. Like I said, when retail traders see this down bottom, they're going to enter for their buy position, right? Enter for buy and they're going to, you know, think that price is going to skyrocket and continue going up right now. But like I said, we are professionals. We are not noobs right here. So I can easily draw like somewhat like a supply right here. And this is also a flip zone, right? Where price actually flip from your demand to supply. And right now price is coming up to this supply zone again, right? So supply zone, and then there is also potential a liquidity sweep right here. Once again, very patient. You don't want to assume what the market is going to do, right? Because this could be easily like, you know, price could easily still go up, right? And just neglect this, this supply zone and just continue going up. So at this point, we are still very patiently waiting to see what price is going to do. And you can see price starts going up, continue going up to sweep the liquidity above these highs, right? This kind of show me some sort of signs that, you know, the sellers have stepped into the market. You can see this long upper wick right there, right? Sellers have potentially stepped into the market, but like I said, we are still waiting for, for that pivot, right? To actually see price actually break that bullish order flow and just complete this retracement and price collapse, right? That is what I want to see, the signs of that bearish stepping in. And you can start to see, right? Boom, boom, boom. Right there, like right there, ladies and gentlemen. The moment I saw this, right? What happened was that I entered for a sell position. I can't remember exactly when, somewhere right around here. Placed my stop loss above this highs right there. And I literally place all my take profit all the way down here at this next demand zone, right? This strong demand zone right here, you can see strong demand zone right here. That is where I place my take profit. Right now, the reason why I actually entered for this trade is because price has officially swept the liquidity above all these swing highs right here. And secondly, it's also at the strong supply zone that we have right here. And thirdly, if you look at like the overall order flow right now on the 15 minute time frame, it is bearish, right? You can see lots of imbalance right here, lots of sellers right here stepping into the market. So now that we got our liquidity sweep, we know for a fact that price is about to collapse, right? And the reason why I place my stop loss above these highs is because this is when the smart money actually entered into the market, right? If you observe closely, look at this candlestick right here. This is when smart money push the price up, sweep the liquidity above these highs right here, and then start pivoting, right? And once price actually sweep the liquidity above these highs, we know for a fact that price is most likely not going to get up to this high ever again. So we place our stop loss there. And you can see when price actually created this large imbalance, you can actually draw your little order block right there. And yeah, we know for a fact that price could potentially retest this order block, right? This 50% level of this order block and tap into more liquidity before collapsing, right? So that is one possible scenario. And let's just see what price does. See, price step into that. And then it just went. It just went like crazy. And it went crazy, went past my take profit, and it went all the way down and down like there is no tomorrow. Like you can see right here, it just kept going down, right? And most likely, this is also because of CPI, right? The consumer price index actually came out on that particular time as well, and it actually fueled this move, right? So this was a very crazy trade setup. Managed to make like 5K in like less than 15 minutes or so. I was extremely surprised because after I ended up for this trade, you know, I was doing my own thing, you know, watching some YouTube videos, and then I pull up my charts and I was like, what the hell just happened? All it takes was like less than 15 minutes and I just made 5k, that's crazy, bro, right? So in this case, I was very patient, right? I was waiting for price to sweep the liquidity above these highs. But when that did not happen, right? You see, price goes up, you know, price is still going up, right? There is no sort of signs that show me that supply have stepped into the market. So I was just waiting. So the moment price actually sweep the liquidity above all these highs, and then I get that bearish momentum, you know, the supply, the smart money stepping into the market, then that is when I executed my trade. Let me show you another trade that I took on GPUSD and this setup I only made about 3.7k but it's a very nice setup and it really helps to clarify a lot of things when it comes to market mechanics, right? So let me just briefly show you guys again. So price is coming down to this demand zone, right? So we go down to the four time frame and you can see price has just been creating that lower high, lower low, low high, lower low dynamic, right? So what happened right here is that price step into this demand zone and it starts, you know, consolidating, right? It starts consolidating, right? And potentially it created this down bottom right here. Once again, if retail traders see this, they're going to enter for their buy position right here, place all their stop loss right here, giving us lots of liquidity below these lows right there. And that is when I'm going to be very careful, right? Because price has not tapped into this demand zone. And most likely, price is going to tap into that demand zone. So we are potentially waiting for price to tap into that demand zone before heading back up. So if price does that, then there will be a liquidity sweep also. So we are just waiting at this point. You can see price goes down, right? Sweep all the liquidity below all these lows right here, giving us your liquidity sweep. 
at this point of time, we are just waiting once again, right? We want to see what price does next because most likely demand is going to step into the market and push price up, right? Push price up, maybe even break through these highs right here, creating that market shift and continuing that uptrend, right? That is an ideal scenario that we want to see. I don't have a goddamn crystal ball. I cannot predict where the market is going to go. So I'm just going to be very patient to see what price does. And you can even draw like a little supply zone right here or like a yeah supply zone right there, right? So I'm going to be aware when price actually come out to this area if you want you could easily enter for a buy position somewhere right around here after price sweep liquidity and then you just get out at this supply zone right there this would be like a very quick scalp right but in this scenario i'm just waiting for that that shift in order flow so you can see price come up here and what happened right here is that price step into the demand zone and i know price step into that supply zone and price seems to be continuing going up right but once again you need to ask yourself where is the available liquidity for the smart money it will be above all these highs right here. Just like how there is liquidity below these lows, there's going to be liquidity above all these swing highs right here. So lots of, you know, lots of liquidity right here. Yeah, so that is when we just want to be very aware to see what price is doing at this supply zone, whether price actually, you know, continue going up or actually mitigate it and start coming down, right? So we got our liquidity ship right there, but we are still waiting to see whether it is valid or not. You can see, seller start stepping into the market. Right, the moment I see this, right, this this pivot, I know for a fact that price is no longer gonna go up, right? Or rather, price is most likely if it wants to go up, right, you have have to come down to somewhere right around here, somewhere right around this. You can see this order block right there. Let's just refine it to this order block right here, because we saw a lot of imbalance right here. A lot of buyers enter into the market, and this will be the order block right there. Most likely, price is gonna come up here, retest this area, to create the higher low before actually heading back up. So that is what I was potentially anticipating, right? That price is gonna do. So right now, my confluence was that price has already swept the liquidity above these highs right here. Right, above all these highs, there was already a liquidity sweep. And then price has also given us that, that supply zone. And then the sellers have also started entering into the market. And that is when I'm ideally looking for my entries on like the one hour time frame. And I can see price actually creating that market shift right here, right? Price broke through the last higher low. That is your break of structure, your market shift, right? So that pretty much tells us that, you know what? Price could potentially be shifting from this bullish order flow right here, right? This bullish order flow and it potentially is going to shift to becoming a bearish order flow and it's going to come into this order block that we have right here before continuing going up. So right here, I was just looking for my entry because after price created that market shift, I'm still very patient. Yeah, I'm still very patient, right? I could have entered right here, but I didn't, right? I think I missed this trade or something because I was busy with other things. And what I did was that I actually drawn my supply zone right here, somewhere right around here, right? You can see sellers step into the market, lots of supply coming in. I think I missed this trade. So I was just looking at price right here, right? So I was just thinking, okay, where could I actually enter for the trade? Because I don't enter here. If I enter here, my stop loss must be above these highs or above these highs. I want to get a very nice entry. So I want to wait for price to come back up to this order block again, fill up that imbalance before heading back down. And that is when I want to enter for my trade setup. So I just place my sell order right there, place my stop loss above these highs right here. And I just, like I said, take profit at this order block right here, right? Because there's lots of demand step into the market. So we know for a fact that this would be a very nice take profit area. So and I will under enter like somewhere right around there and you can see price goes up. Yeah, this is when I got tapped into the trade, right? Ideally, right, I always want to enter on a 50%. So what happened was that if you just see this, this would be like the 50% level. So that is when I enter for the trade, you know, place my stop loss above this, this order block right there and take profit at this demand zone. And that was, yeah, a pretty fast trade, right? And now this was a very simple short position. I got tapped into this trade, like somewhere right around here at a 50% level and price just goes straight down to the demand zone before actually going back up. So yeah, simple trade, market mechanics. So the market mechanics concepts are not just working for me. They are working for all the traders that are actually implementing it inside the 1% club. So you can see, this is literally the wins, right? This is inside the 1% club and look at those wins. It's crazy. Everybody's just winning right here using market mechanics. Win, 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 win. Making lots of money. This girl Stephanie made over like, let me see, about $2,000, $4,800. This is crazy. She deposited $2,000 and then she end off making a 4.8K profit just using pure market mechanics concepts, right? That is pretty impressive. 
And as you can see, all of these are just wins after wins. I'm not kidding when I say that market mechanics concepts actually work because if you actually bother to actually go through all the concepts and actually implement it right this would be you as well you will become part of the winners as well trading is a zero-sum game you can either be a winner or a loser you can continue trading like all the retail trading concepts getting your stop loss hunted and losing money and blowing accounts after accounts and just continue being a slave to the market and make absolutely no money or you can join the winners inside the one percent club like we literally can't lose bro all of us are just winning and we're just stealing your hard money. Anyways, if you look at my April trading journal, you will see that I've not been doing well. Like I said, I've had a bad month, right? So this month I've already won, I've only won like two trades and I've lost four trades, right? Once again, I'm showing you guys this for transparency purposes, right? I'm going to be extremely honest with you guys because I believe that is what a leader should be. Just show you the good, the bad, and the ugly side of trading. And one lesson that I've learned recently is that nowadays, I don't give a shit about getting a 90% win rate and trying to win every single trade. If you look at this right here, when I lose, I lose about 1%, right? That's the average. I lose about 1%. And when I win, I win big. I win 5%, I win 3.7%. And this is why I managed to stay consistently profitable for so long because my risk management is so tight and I execute all my trades based on my trading plan. That is what I care about right now. It's no longer about getting that 90% win rate trading strategy. It's about how can I manage my risk properly? How can I get trades that give me the highest risk to reward? How can I you know, follow my trading plan every single day and actually trade mechanically? Anyways, I'm just going to go make some tea right now and we can get on with the uncut section. Welcome to the uncut section. We got our green tea and we are good. Most people think that I drink some expensive premium green tea flu from Japan just because I'm a millionaire. But obviously, that's not the case. This is just some cheap tea bags that you can get from Walmart for less than $10. All right, I'm just going to remain cheap and honest. Anyways, I want to talk about trading psychology. Trading psychology again, Brad. It's a little bit different this time. Trading psychology is not very important. Oh, oh my god, wait, what, Brad? Trading psychology is not very important. What are you talking about? You always say that trading psychology is the most important thing ever. Okay, shut up, listen. Trading is not a 90% psychology. You can have the best psychology in the world. You can be a robot and... Look at charts with absolutely no emotions, be a killer. But if you don't have a solid edge, you don't have a winning trading strategy that works, there's no point of you having a good psychology. This is what most gurus don't tell you, right? It is important. Yes, psychology is important. But first, you need to develop an edge. You need to have a trading strategy that actually works. Because if you have a shit trading strategy, and you don't actually know where exactly to enter and exit your trades because you don't have mechanical rules, then there's no point of you having trading psychology, bro. Wake the hell up. So that's the first point I want to get across, right? Trading is not 90% psychology, right? So just stop fooling yourself. Stop trying to read all the trading psychology books and just watching Mark Douglas video and you think that, you know, trading psychology is the, 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 the problem. But in reality, you are still trading goddamn support and resistance levels and freaking looking for chart patterns without really understanding the flow, the order flow of the market, the market dynamics and liquidity and manipulation. Brokey, noob, you're trash. Anyways, Next thing I'll say is profitable trading is boring, right? Extremely boring. It's not like the Wolf of Wall Street. Most people think that profitable trading, or rather, okay, you just go to YouTube right now and you search day in the life of a Forex trading. These mother, these bank, these wankers will go into like a Rolex shop, right? Start of the video, you see them walking into a Rolex shop. Okay, let's get this watch. Okay, then next thing you know, they're at a car dealership, probably Lamborghini rented this Lamborghini, and then they're in the life of a Forex trader over. All right, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll put some trades here and there. Demo profits show you, oh bro, I just made $55,000 from, from this one trade. Bro, that is not profitable trading. I can't emphasize the importance of this, right? I'm going to post a day in the live video soon, right? And you will see how goddamn boring my life is. Profitable trading is just me waking up, going to the gym, 
meditating, visualizing my goals. And then I sit there, start analyzing my charts. And I just wait. <gasps> what? Brad, you just wait? Yes, I just wait. I just wait for price to reach my point of interest. I just wait for price to get to a point where I actually want to enter for the trade. And if it doesn't, then it is what it is. I'm just not going to take that trade. As simple as that. Yes, it's goddamn boring, all right? It's just me in front of my goddamn computer every single day. I have no girlfriend, right? It's just me and my goddamn computer. It sounds goddamn depressing, but that it, that it is. That, that's just profitable trading. And then after I'm done trading, I'll just sit there once again with my goddamn computer and journal down my trades, right? What went wrong, what went right. And then I will review my trading performance every monthly, quarterly, and just look at how I can actually improve my trading performance and actually optimize every single part of my life so that I can become the best trader possible. That is profitable trading. And anyone who shows you otherwise is lying to you. It's not, like I said, it's not like the Wolf of Wall Street. You're not automatically going to have 10 prostitutes, 10 strippers walking into your room just because you start trading. And by the way, just a random thought. But do you ever realize that I've never ever promoted any sort of prop firms or brokers or trading app or any bullshit out there? Do you realize that I have over like 780,000 subscribers, but I've never accepted a single sponsorship. And bear in mind, every single trading company you can think of has literally reached out to me to ask me to sponsor, to be, to promote them for like a large sum of money. And I've never ever done that once. You want to know the real reason behind it? It's because I don't want to sell my soul to the devil. Yes, that is the truth. Let me tell you a story. So there was this crypto broker, one of the most renowned crypto broker. I cannot name who, right? I don't want to tarnish their reputation. What they did was that they flew in this girl model. Beautiful, stunning Asian from Las Vegas all the way to Singapore to meet me. So we met at this office building. She brought me up to her office building and that's when a big boss come in, shake my hand. Obviously, I shake my, my hand back like a big boss. And then she showed me she, she showed me this deck of slides, right? Okay, Brad, you gotta do this. You know, you gotta make two videos about us. You gotta add our link to our broker on every single YouTube video of yours. And in addition to all of that, you get a ton of benefits. You get this nice thing, that thing. And here's the best part. I'm going to offer you $50,000 just for you to mention our broker. $50,000. Bear in mind, at that point of time, when I got that offer, I was only making about 100 k per year. I was only making six figures. 50 k That is half of my net worth, bro. And I also got this beautiful chick right here who's ready to get wiped up. What's there not to like? And I told them that I will consider it. But deep down, I told myself, hell no, I'll never accept this shit. Look at what happened right now. All the freaking prop firms, all the brokers that your trading gurus are promoting, they are literally running away. They are shutting down, they are scamming you. This is the reason why I will never ever betray you guys for the sake of money. That is... I believe that's like the basic honor and integrity that you need to have as a man. That is like literally the bare minimum. Even though I could have like doubled my net worth, if I just mentioned this broker in all my videos, I want to do something that is right. Something that really allows me to sleep at night. And yeah, that is why I really didn't accept it. Yeah, but now that I think back about it, I'm so glad that I did not sold my soul to the devil. It was so tempting. But yeah, I just want to see you guys get rich, change your life for the battle, and that's, that's really what I hope to do on this channel. Anyways, right now, I'm very focused. Right? Just like I said, profitable trading is boring, right? And you can see the day in my life is extremely boring. So for those people who ask me why, why do I live this way when I'm already a millionaire, I can take my foot off the pedal, I can go out there and buy my dream car, I already have a nice watch, I can buy a big mansion, but why am I still living like a, in a way where it's like a militarily disciplined life, where I'm waking up early, you know, doing all these good habits and just being very focused. It's because right now, I believe in this one quote, 
You can either have a lifestyle or an empire. And I choose to build an empire. Right? Like I said, yes, I can go out there, do all the fancy shit, you know, flex to you guys, flex to you peasants out there. But I choose not to because I know for, for, for a fact that right now I'm in the building phase, right? I'm just building and building. And right now I'm focused on three goals. Number one, become the number one trading, number one leader inside the trading industry and actually lead my young men and women to become profitable traders. Number two, make 1% Club the best trading education company in the entire world so that we can really help much more traders to achieve consistent profitability and trade like professionals. And then number three is to reach my fullest potential as a trader. I want to break my limits. Last year, I make about six figures from trading. This year, I want to make about seven figures. So I want to see how I can take that too and right now honestly anything else is just a distraction to me that is how focused and hungry i am right and just bear in mind i'm gonna be your competition bro like we are all in this together right if you're trading you're trading against me just imagine this you're trading against a guy like me who is extremely hungry extremely focused and will do whatever it takes to win and you're out there continue eating your junk food watching on netflix and when you are trading you are not even really focused and present and you're just trading like a noob and whenever i tell you guys to work your ass off i did by example i practice what i preach i walk the talk if i tell you guys to work your ass off i myself have to work my ass off now bear in mind that i started in a worse place than you are i literally grew up wearing secondhand clothes used by others my mom grew up in a village where she has to wake up early to feed cows, pigs, and chickens. And I remember fishing in a village in like this drainage, catching like fishes and, you know, drinking water that is literally like not even clean. I grew up in the most uncomfortable environment ever, right? Completely broke. And I still end off the race faster than you are. So my question to you is, what excuses do you have? There is literally no excuse for you not to work hard. It is your duty and your obligation to become successful. That is why I created the 1% challenge. This is what I've been doing for the past four years. Just been putting my head down and work and just living this disciplined life. And that is what made me $1 million at the age of 21. Right? Something that most people can only dream of. And I literally document a step-by-step that you guys can actually do so inside the 1% challenge. And guess what? I can easily sell this for a course and make like thousands of dollars or you know i can just sell you some shit but no this one percent challenge is going to be completely free you can access to the one percent challenge this 90 days challenge that will completely transform your life for the battle and make you a profitable trader and you can get it inside our free trading community the trading tribe i'm literally giving you the opportunity to change your life right now to really get yourself out of this shithole and actually make something for yourself build a better life for yourself all you need to do is to grab the goddamn opportunity, bro. So yeah, join the trading tribe completely free. Access the 1% challenge. Start it. 90 days is all you need to change your life and take your trading to the next level. And you can watch the previous Uncut Trading episode right here. And as always, remember, you're just one trade away. Mwah.